Hey, how's it going today? It's Robert from Pheasant Lane Farm. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in. As you can see, this is not my F-150. The F-150 is gone, and now we got a new tow rig. So we'll go into that real quick. I wanted to make a short video. Um, just had to run to Lowe's, grab some 2x4s. Man, if you haven't bought 2x4s lately, when I built uh, the chicken coop, earlier this year I think I paid a dollar 98 each now they're almost six bucks so um, I know they're blaming it on COVID and the uh, wood shops being down or the mills I don't know if there's any truth to that or not but that's what I was told today so back to the story of the truck if you watched my video from about a week and a half ago had a little bit of an electrical issue with my f-150 um, my f-150 was a 2015 it was a custom ordered XLT and the thing was loaded. Uh, power, everything, heated seats, uh, had the big seven or eight inch screen in it, tow package, four by four, five liter, four door, just a beautiful truck. Premium wheels, truck bed liner, lights in the bed. I had a aluminum backflip tunnel cover on it. Just absolutely love that truck. Hi chicken, the chickens made a visit. So. What we use that truck for, when I bought that truck, um, I had an older F-150 and I upgraded to the 2015. Um, and then I had a, I bought a 2014 Fusion, brand new, um, paid that off quick and then I ended up tra actually trading that in for the F-150, wanted to get back just to having one vehicle and not paying two insurances. So that F-150 served me very well for the uh, four or five years I owned it. Uh, Three and a half years I owned it, actually. I had to do some quick math in my head. Um, that tr truck did a lot of towing. Uh, my brother, dad, and I, we own a 19-foot walleye boat. We also own a 17-foot duck boat that we used to run in the marshes um, or when we hunt the lake. We have a enclosed trailer we pulled. We pull a lot. Uh, we have two flatbeds. Um, we have a 20-foot uh, implement trailer. I have a 14-foot I think it's 12 or 14 foot landscape trailer so the thing got used a lot but took very good care of it ran premium oils in it changed all the filters more than i needed to but we had a little electrical issue a couple weeks ago um head at the ford dealer and uh they said they found a short in my rear plug my trailer connector plug seven away i believe um or the four i don't know they uh anyways they fixed that um and then I got it back and it was fine. And then it started acting up again when I didn't have a trailer hooked to it. So I took it back to the dealer. And obviously I was a little frustrated when it was over there. And, uh, you know, having it there two times in the same week. And jokingly, I said, how about you guys just take this in on trade? And one of the salesmen walk up. He goes, you want to trade this truck in? And I said, I was joking. but And he goes, we would love to have your truck. I said, what? I said, it's got electrical issue you guys can't figure out. He goes, I would love to have your truck as is. He said, with COVID going on, people had to cancel their vacations, their summer plans. He goes, so on the flip side of that, people are buying more boats, more recreational vehicles, more ATVs, more trailers, um, stuff like that. So they were, you know, just uh, could still have a fun summer. And from speaking to the dealer my dad just bought his camper from, and the guys who work on our boats, that's very true. They said they've sold unprecedented amounts of trailers, campers, and boats this year. And he goes, with that being said, we need, guys are going crazy over half tons right now. It doesn't matter what make, model, we just want half ton trucks. So that kind of got the wheels rolling in my head. And I was talking to the service guy. And the dealer came back and offered me a lot more money for my truck than what trade-in was. So that kind of got the wheels turning in my head a little bit. Um, my wife and I have been talking about getting a dump trailer now that we started a small business. So we sell totes, the IBC totes, food grade. Um, I sell the cages for people for firewood. I use the cages for myself so I can move them around easy with the tractor. Um, some of the other videos, you've probably seen the piles of logs that are stacking up. I got a deal made with a uh, company that is dropping logs off here. Um, stuff I want, I process and stack out back, and then I sell some of it. Um, some people just want kind of lesser quality wood for outdoor fire pits. So today I'm actually working on a bundle machine. 
So we've just been busy, busy, busy. Um, on top of that, um, people want me to do work with the tractor. Um, and then we could really use a dump trailer around here, um, hauling compost, hauling stone. We have a 900 foot driveway here. So this spring we had 130 ton of stone hauled in. So I don't think I need any big trucks anytime soon, but it would be nice just to have a dump trailer. My dad would have a use for it. Um, we've already had two roll offs come out here, dumpsters, uh, trying to clean up this old farm we bought. So a dump trailer was like, just it was the next kind of progression that seemed to make sense. Um, and then make some side money on that, renting that out uh, and such. So I started looking at dump trailers and I knew it was gonna be a little too much for the F-150. So kind of the timing on my truck going, the electrical issue was kind of bad, but at the same time, it was kind of a blessing. So when I found out that these guys, these dealerships are so crazy right now for F-150s in good shape, um, granted mine had 120,000 miles, it was a 15. They said they didn't care, they know I took care of it. Um, I took it to that place for any recall work and service. Um, and they said they'd be glad to have it and they rated it a 4.5 out of 5 stars on a trade-in. Um, they had a nice truck there, it was a 16, it was a little more than I wanted to spend. 12,000 miles on a 2016 F-250 diesel, which is unheard of. And uh, it was a short bed, I really wanted a long bed. And, you know, it just had a lot of bells and whistles I didn't need right now. And then if it's like, I could have, you know, we could afford that. We could afford it. But then I was just, I felt like I just like, nah, I don't know, it's just a lot of money. You know, if I could find a deal and stay at the same payment range I was in on my F-150 with the equity, because I traded in a three-year-old car paid off when I got my truck. So I had a good amount of equity in my truck. So... Sorry, mumble jumbo, but just kept looking around. And uh, I found this truck uh, about three hours from me. So let me take you a quick walk around this truck, um, tell you the pros and cons of it, and you guys tell me if I made a good trade. So as you can see, this truck has a flatbed. Um, aesthetically pleasing, they are not, but uh, utility wise for what we're doing the firewood the totes um, like I said right now uh, I was thinking about buying a larger gooseneck trailer to go pick up totes obviously I can, I can pick up more of them in a run uh, that helps my profit margins and my costs stay low the problem is the f-150 even though it was rated for it probably not gonna pull a 32 foot gooseneck um, I see guys do it all the time uh, but it is what it is. So I found this truck. This is a 2015 F-250 with a 6.7 uh, power stroke. Low miles. Um, as you can see, a lot of people may not like the looks of a flatbed. The chickens seem to love it. This truck was spotless when I brought it home. Uh, put about 500 miles on it this week. Um, Dad and I went to Indiana on it this week. Uh, looking at dump trailers went to a couple different dealers, but let me give you a walk around this truck um, With my equity I had in my f-150 what I had left to pay on it um, I traded in and the payments are almost the same So I went from an f-150 that was loaded pretty much every option you could think of um, except leather seats uh, To kind of a plain Jane f-250 work truck But I think I made the right choice. My wife actually loves this truck um, the kid loves it, and uh, she calls it the buttless truck because there's not a bed on it. Um, but let me walk you around the truck, and then here's the kicker on this truck. Have you ever bought a used vehicle and wondered what's the life story on that truck? Who owned it? What did they use it for? I mean, you can get a car fax, but that really doesn't tell you a lot. Well, let's just say I was able to get in contact from the gentleman that had this truck before me. I got the life story on this truck, and that's just kind of a sigh of relief. You know it wasn't used and abused. Um, so we'll start with a walk around on this. Um, like I said, um, it's got a flatbed on it. Let me turn the camera around here. This is a Bradford built uh, flatbed, very nice bed. Uh, when I saw the truck online, I started doing research on the bed and the company and a lot of people love them. You don't see a lot around here. I'm in Ohio. So most of what you see around here is gonna be Mort's, uh, CM, um, beds of that sort morts is made 100 miles from here so you see a lot of uh, aluminum and steel morts beds I actually took the license plate off um, 
my old truck they put the license plate on here with the cover on it and it was dirty and you couldn't even see through the license plate so um figured i'd get put that back on here clean that uh license plate cover up one less reason to get stopped but let's we'll start with the bed this is a bradford built steel truck bed um, it does have the skirting on it uh, what i liked about this truck is it already has a gooseneck ball underneath that trap door um, and what's really cool about this is these sides fold down underneath these there is four stake pockets and i'll flip them down i can't do it with one hand but i'll flip it down and uh, get some footage of that these lock up here oh actually i got it done right there so that locks up there's a place this bradford bed to put locks so you can't fold those down pull this lever pull this down as you can see i got d-rings in here and there's four stake pockets so i like the versatility of this bed when it's up you can put a two by four in that channel to make a little tailgate all led lights hitch is rated for uh 18 000 pounds gooseneck ball is rated for 30 000. um like i said this is an xl work truck um, i have the build sheet on it and the original window sticker was in the glove box this was custom ordered with basically an XL package with the XLT um, interior and other options with it. It's still all Bluetooth. It's all wireless on the inside. Um, instead of the vinyl flooring and vinyl seats, it does have the vinyl flooring, but it has an upgraded interior. So we'll get around to that. But that's the Bradford bed. I really like that. Um, everything's, all the hinge points are greasable. That's not rust, it's just dirty. So that flips up. I like that. I'm um, show you the gooseneck ball here real quick. Let's pull this trap door. Lays down. Very clean. Um, and uh, it pulled a horse trailer a few times. And we'll get back to the back story on that. As you can see, there's a few scratches on the bed. Um, the bed is actually six months old. was put on right before the truck was traded in. And I did add the toolbox this week because there's no storage underneath the seats of this truck like there was in my old truck. Um, very clean truck. There's a dent up there in the headache rack, but I think that's from when it was put on. And uh, I actually removed all the stickers from the bed when I got it this week. So very clean truck. Um, this truck came out of South Dakota. So I guess uh, while I'm showing you the truck, I'll tell you the kind of backstory on it. On the way home, I asked my dad, we drove three hours to pick this truck up, uh, did the trade on my truck. They really wanted it. And uh, on the way back, I asked my dad if he wanted to drive for a little while. He has a brand new, well, was new. He custom ordered a 2019 F-350 King Ranch Super Duty. Um, long bed, four-door, four-wheel drive, loaded. That was his retirement present to himself. So I asked him if he wanted to drive this. He thinks this truck drives excellent and uh, he actually likes the flatbed on it but uh driving home let me show you the interior here first for being a work truck this thing is spotless there's no tears in the seats there's no stains anywhere very clean truck uh, as you can see kiddo's been riding in it funny story that is a king ranch logo my dad gave me the King Ranch floor mats from his truck. They were still wrapped in plastic because he put in some uh, aftermarket ones when he got the truck. And he said that that increased the value of this truck $20,000. So my dad's quite the joker. As you can see, vinyl floor, like brand new. There's no holes in it. Very clean. Uh, I'll show you the front real quick. I'll do a walk around the other side. But back to the uh, backstory on this truck. Driving it home, uh, my dad was driving it home, and there was, uh, I was going through the owner's manual, and I found a South Dakota State Farm Insurance card. So, I got on the good old Facebook, and I messaged the guy. Uh, he has quite a unique name. So, he was the only one on Facebook with that name, and we started talking. And I figured he'd be like, nah, this, what's going on here? I'm not responding. But within five minutes, he responded. And I said, hey, did you used to own an F-250 white Ford? He said, oh, flatbed rig. I go, yeah. He goes, yes, I did. And I said, well, 
kind of crazy, but if you don't mind, can I get a little backstory on the truck? And he said, yeah, no problem. Show you this side over here. And uh, he goes, yeah, I bought that truck. It was a Ford lease. An electrical contractor had it, and then I bought it. He goes, it was super clean, and I put the flatbed on it this spring of 2020. We're in Ohio, so you got to make sure you got your optics ready at all times. Very clean interior, no stains on any of those seats. And uh, these are the floor mats out of my F-150. Just because if you spill something, it's not running down in the groove here. It'll stay on there. But back to the story. Sorry, I'm going to keep getting sidetracked. He said, I bought that truck when uh, it came off a lease. I said, all right. He goes, I'm in South Dakota. Everybody runs flatbeds. I said, all right. He goes, I plan on keeping this truck for quite a while. He said, uh, so I did the trade, or I had this truck. I, he said he put the, the, the Bradford built flatbed on it, and he put the running boards on it this spring of 2020. Just so happened that uh, after he did that, a truck he had had his eye on for quite a while got traded in. So he was planning on keeping this for a long time, but ended up trading it in on a, a different truck he had been wanting for a while that popped up in his area. So I said, all right. He goes, uh, they took very good care of it, whoever had it before me, um, which actually I did a little more digging, and it was a Native American-owned uh, electrical contractor in the Dakotas. Um, so I don't know if it was a foreman truck or what, but it's super clean. But my big thing was, hey, you put a flatbed on it, was it an accident? And he goes, no, I just wanted the flatbed. Everybody out here runs flatbeds. And he sent me a picture in his side yard, and he actually has, uh, or out back, he actually has the original bed for this truck. He said he would sell it to me if I wanted it. Um, so it's kind of cool. He goes, uh, he goes, yeah, he goes, it's a very good flatbed. And he said the ball should have a little bit of grease on it. He said, because I pulled my uh, girlfriend or fiance's horse trailer once or twice with it before I traded it in. So it's pretty cool. I know the backstory on it. I know what oils he ran in it. I know what filters he ran in it. Um, just a very nice truck. Now it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that my F-150 did. Hello, freckles. But uh, I think it's got the, there's a couple stone chips here. There's one. There might be another one somewhere on the truck. Those are flies sitting up there. Um, which brings me back to something else. He said in the Dakotas, in my area, we do not use salt. He said we use gravel. Um, he goes, so you shouldn't have any rust issues. And I'm going to get it hot oiled on the bottom. So it's kind of cool to buy a truck find the backstory on it um it's just very clean for being a work truck it's like i don't know if they put a new interior in it or if they just didn't it doesn't have a lot of miles on it um so i'm not sure what was going on there but uh, the only thing i did i did the steering wheel cover just because my old steering wheel was leather wrapped and thick um as you can see the dash is not very fancy compared to my other truck i'm probably going to pull this head unit out because one thing this truck does not have that I want is a backup camera. And I was uh, on some of the Super Duty forums and Facebook pages. There's uh, a few companies now that are just plug and play. And I can mount a small camera on the flatbed or up on the headache rack. Go to a touch screen and a backup camera on one. Um, but a uh, nice truck, 4x4. Something I really like, actually, is this has the manual 4x4. So no electronic shift on the fly. It's one less thing to go wrong. We don't use 4x4 a lot here. Um, but when I do, it's nice to know. Like I said, you can see how clean the vinyl floor is. This is just the uh, old format out of my F-150. So just trying to keep that clean. Uh, I think WeatherTech makes a set of floor liners that go on top of the vinyl floor um, that are made specifically for it. And I know some people ask, why would you put rubber floor mats on top of a vinyl floor? For this reason only. I have a six-year-old. Right now, if something gets on the vinyl floor and it spills, it runs right down into here. Um, she actually spilled a milkshake in my old truck once. She fell asleep. We were on the highway, and uh, I didn't know that she was pouring a chocolate milkshake down on the floor. But uh, 
If I wouldn't have had the floor mats, it would have been all here on the sides. The floor mats caught them, taking car wash, hose them out. Just look like brand new. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy with this truck. Uh, very clean. There's a few things I'm going to do to it cosmetically. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the tires and wheels. They did put brand new tires on it when I bought it. How many eggs did you get today? Three. Three eggs? Mommy's going to be happy. Minutes. You just, just got it? Baby All right. Our chickens are laying eggs now, so she's excited. See how warm this one is. See how warm that one is? Ooh, that's a warm egg. That's right. That's a butt nugget right there. And see how warm this one is. Here, show the camera the colors. Different colors we're getting. These are from our Easter egg or chickens. So you got kind of a, what, what would you call that? Uh, that's a freckle egg. Yeah, there's like a, a beige egg, a green I one, and that's kind of, that's one. kind of a gray egg. Yeah, Vivian made this one. I like how you dressed yourself today. Nice pants. I think this one is a buckeye. Yeah. I watched the video. But, uh, I might, uh, keep the tires and wheels to run in the winter. I'd like to get something else on it, so a little bit higher. Um, next thing, I always tint every one of my vehicles when I get them. I just get really bad headaches when trucks are real bright. I've been that way since I was a kid. The problem here is the tent shop I usually deal with said they're two months out. Usually you can get in in two days. They said everyone is spending their stimulus money still or their unemployment getting their uh, vehicles tinted. And that's about it. And I'd like to get a backup camera installed on it. But, uh, but here is the new tow rig. I think I did good on it. Traded in an F-150 with 120,000 miles with a, for a 6.7 F-250 with a brand new bed on it. As you can see, there's no rust underneath this truck. It's all been professionally Z-barded. I think that's what that's called. Very clean. No rust anywhere on this truck that I've found. New bed, new running boards. Do you like the truck? What do you call it? The buttless truck. The what? The buttless truck. Why do you call it a buttless truck? There's no butt. Yeah, there's no butt on it. Those are some crazy jeans, kid. Yeah, there's chicken prints all over. I wish they'd stay off, but that is what and it those is. Those guys. Yeah. But um, very happy with it. Let me know what you guys think if I made a good deal. Um, this truck uh, has 70,000 miles on it, which is nothing on a 6.7. And now I feel a little bit more confident that I do know the service history of it. Um, and it was on Ford when it was on the Ford lease, they did all the maintenance on it. And there's one nick in the front bumper, but uh, not too worried about that. But got a lot of projects going around on around here, and uh, happy to have this truck. I gotta get the house power washed, I graded around it with the tractor. Um, it was some low spots, and then we got some heavy rain, so the house looks muddy. Just staying busy, busy, but. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, oh, one more thing before I go. Let me know what oil you guys run in these. I was always an Amsoil guy, but I read some things where they say uh, Amsoil may not be the best choice with this motor. And this is a Kurt six inch drop. It's kind of hard to tell. This truck sits, uh, sits pretty high. And uh, the bottom of that hitch receiver is a half, a half inch or an inch higher than my dad's stock F-350 King Ranch four-door, four-wheel drive long bed. So this will pull my implement, my dump trailer. Oh, excuse me. My implement, my dump trailer. But I need a lower drop to pull my two boats. So let me know what you guys think about hitches, what oils you run. And there's Freckles trying to bite my hand. But uh, I'm going to get working on this project before the wife gets home from work. And then I have to go to work. So let me know what you guys think. Um, everybody at work gives me crap about it because they think it's an ugly truck. But from a utilitarian standpoint and what we're doing and doing a small business, uh, I think this was the right choice. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay safe. Stay out of trouble. And uh, I just can't win with these damn chickens. All right, guys. Talk to you later.